Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 6. I think a lot of it has to do with the tendency of, of firefighters, police officers, EMS workers. We see a lot day to day, and we kind of hold it in a lot. We don't really talk about it. Emergency responders put their lives on the line to protect and keep us safe. And with the unpredictability of the job comes a lot of stress, which can cause mental health challenges. A new report shows that in 2017, firefighters and police officers are taking their own lives more times compared to being killed in the line of duty. Our Valley News team's Maddie Gelsas shows us ways local departments help their employees cope with the stress of the job. First responders are the first ones on scene seeing some of the most tragic events. This can cause mental health challenges for some firefighters and police officers. The job itself is stressful because of the situations that we go to every single day. They're different from one from the next. A report shows that in 2017, there were 103 firefighters and 140 police officers who committed suicide, compared to the 93 firefighters and 129 police officers who died in the line of duty. Now, departments are adding even more resources, like counseling, debriefing, and crisis teams, so these suicide rates decline. So the things like having a chaplain, having uh, resources in place, and then having a resource list so you know who to call if something were to happen. Coping with the stress of the job is also important, especially in these high-risk environments. Some of the healthy ways are physical exercise. Aerobic exercise is a great way to, to, to relieve stress. It's important for these emergency responders to stay healthy and cope with the stress of the job so they can continue to protect the community they serve on a day-to-day -day basis. Reporting in Fargo, Mandy Jalsup, Valley News Live. Post-traumatic stress disorder is also a problem with emergency personnel because they see such tragic events every day. If you or someone is thinking about suicide, you can call the National Su Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-8255. After yesterday's incident involving an attempted bike theft that ended in shots fired and a suspect tasered in downtown Fargo, we wanted to know, are police lives on the line more than ever? Moorhead Police Swenson says we're not imagining it. He says he's seeing more people question police authority lately and reveal a weapon or run away when approached by police. He says there's a reason. Well, we have a higher population in our community, so we have a higher call volume in all of our departments in our metro area. We also see an increase in mental health issues, um, and we're seeing an increase in a lot of times in chemical dependency pieces. Both Fargo and Moorhead Police Departments tell us their officers regularly go through training in order to de-escalate a situation where a suspect is resisting and maybe carrying a weapon. It's been wet, windy and chilly out there for most of the day. Not too many people stopping to chat in weather like this. Let's chat with Hutch to find out about tonight. Yeah, Mike, thanks so much. That view out to the west on the sky cam may be the only sun we'll see in the FM area today. Clouds are clearing out in Jamestown, but Fargo still some passing showers even now. Grand Forks, the same thing. The heaviest rain, though, out in Lakes Country, Becker County, out towards Monoman County, where you see the yellow and orange pixels there on the radar. Heavy showers of rain. Rain from the Red River Valley into parts of western Minnesota will continue as we go through the entire overnight hours. So a soggy night there, a little quieter out to the east. Temperature-wise, well, we'll stay fairly mild with all the clouds around. I expect 40s all evening, and that wind that's been gusty at times subsides as well. Tell you how long the rain sticks around in the forecast, and look toward the weekend ahead here in a few minutes. All right, thanks. Moorhead police want your help finding a man allegedly involved in a prescription medication theft. The person pictured here was at a Walgreens in Moorhead on September 17th. He may be driving a dark-colored new Jeep Renegade. Anyone with information on him is urged to call Moorhead police, and that phone number is 218-299-5122. If you live in Holly, Minnesota, listen up. The city wants you to know about a planned power outage. Work on the Minn Kota electric transmission line is prompting the citywide outage. It's going to start at 11 tonight. It's going to last for six hours, so that's until 5 a.m. tomorrow morning. The outage will allow for the installation of a new tower east of town. That's going to help increase the long-term reliability of power in the town. And this program note, Valley News Live will be carrying tomorrow's U.S. Senate debate between Heidi Heitkamp and Kevin Kramer. Coverage is from 7 to 8 p.m., and that's on KX4. 
A new report says a cancer-linked herbicide has been found in more than two dozen popular breakfast cereals and snack bars. Glyphosate is uh, the main ingredient in Roundup. It was found in 26 of 28 products tested. The levels were higher than what scientists consider protective of children's health. Glyphosate is the most heavily used herbicide in the United States. Officials say every year more than 250 pounds of the product is sprayed on American crops. Quaker and General Mills still say the products are safe and there's no reason for concern. Glyphosate was found in seven flavors of Cheerios, several flavors of Quaker Instant Oatmeal, and overnight oats, Quaker breakfast squares and flats, Quaker snack bars, and more. Last week, Monsanto was ordered by a court to pay nearly $78 million to a man who claims his terminal cancer was caused by exposure to Roundup. Now, for a complete list of the products, go to our website and click on this story. The fifth annual Boo at NDSU event kicked off earlier this evening, all thanks to NDSU Residence Life and the Volunteer Network. The event offers a Halloween children's carnival at the Matthew Living Learning Center, where kids can play games and do crafts and other Halloween activities. There's also trick-or-treating at certain residence halls across campus. And to make sure that you don't get lost, there are maps offered at the carnival. The event is going on right now. It is free and open to the public until 7 o'clock. And of course, costumes are encouraged. It wasn't the big payout, but someone in Fargo with a Powerball ticket did win $100,000 last night. That ticket matched four white balls in the Powerball, which was worth $50,000. Then you add in a multiplier of two and the ticket's value doubled. Now the winning numbers were 3, 21, 45, 53, 56, and the Powerball was 22. The lucky ticket was sold at Holiday Gas Station store on Brant Drive in Fargo. No one is yet to contact the lottery office to claim that prize. Congratulations to them. Yes. It's a good prize. Could you live where the temperature is sub-zero and it's dark six months out of the year? Later on Valley News Live at 6, why someone from Minnesota is living in those conditions. Up next, the high cost of repairing and replacing those safety devices in your car. You're watching Valley News Live, on TV, online, and on the go. Always on, wherever you are, whenever you need to know, Valley News Live. You're watching Valley News Live on KVLY, your hometown NBC station. Don't miss the final days of Conlon's 81st anniversary with amazing deals on the furniture you want. Everything's on sale store-wide. Plus, ask about available 60-month special financing. Don't miss the final weekend of Conlon's huge 81st anniversary celebration. Here's your Buick, sir. Actually, that's my Buick. Your Buick doesn't have a roof rack. This is my Buick. How are we going to fit in your mom's Buick? Easy. I like that new Buick. Me too. I was actually talking about that Buick. I knew that. Did you? Buick's fresh new lineup is full of surprises. Get 1.9% financing for 72 months, plus 750 purchase allowance on most 2018 Enclave models. See your North Star Buick dealers. Hey, Doug. We got a fresh delivery of that sweet corn you love. Nice. Where do you guys get that stuff? It's amazing. Kelly Armstrong will get real results for North Dakota farmers and ranchers. North Dakota's proud of the food we produce, so we have to ensure the viability of our farm programs to protect our local farmers and ranchers. For our North Dakota family farmers, it's more than a job, it's a way of life. Kelly Armstrong gets things done. He'll work every day to protect our family farms. Real conservative, real results. Kelly Armstrong for Congress. I'm Kelly Armstrong and I approve this message. Don't miss the final days of Conlon's 81st anniversary with amazing deals on the furniture you want. Everything's on sale store-wide. Plus, ask about available 60-month special financing. Don't miss the final weekend of Conlon's huge 81st anniversary celebration. Tonight's news brought to you by Dakota Growers Pasta Company. Come make pasta with us. 
Welcome back. The extra money spent on safety features in your car could add up to thousands more after a minor collision. A new study by AAA says that safety features like automatic emergency braking, blind spot monitoring, and lane departure warning can cost twice as much to repair. It compared the repair bill for a minor front or rear crash on a car with those safety features and found that the bill can run as high as $5,300. That's almost two and a half times the repair cost for a vehicle without these systems. With one in three Americans unable to afford an unexpected repair bill of just $500, AAA suggests to review your insurance policy and consider the potential repair costs before buying a car with these features. Now, for a complete list and potential cost of repairs on these safety systems, visit our website and click on this story. Narcan, the drug overdose reversal medication, will soon be available at local libraries and YMCAs across the country as part of the national effort to address the opioid crisis. The drug's maker says it will provide two doses of the nasal spray to more than 16,000 libraries and 2,700 YMCAs for free. Narcan nasal spray is needle-free naloxone used as emergency treatment for opioid overdoses. The company also offers free doses to high schools and colleges. In the Cass County area, schools are already supplied with a life-saving drug. Opioid overdoses kill an estimated 115 Americans every day. Talk about dedicated. Later on Valley News Live at 6, meet the Minnesota scientist who holds a record for the time spent at the South Pole and why he chooses to go there. A little warmer than the South Pole across the valley, but very gray and wet. Rain continues mainly across Minnesota. Less than a tenth of an inch at last check here in the FM area, but upwards of an inch estimated, estimated by Doppler radar in northwest Minnesota. Hey, there's the sun. All well, your forecast right after this.